Hey guys, what's going on? It's Carl here back with another video and it is once again review time of the Galaxy Note 5. And this is the predecessor naturally to the Note 4, which was one of my favorite Android devices of last year. And I find myself using the Note series for a couple months a year just because of that awesome S Pen. It is once again back for 2015 with a completely new redesign following in the footsteps of the Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge. Here's what I think of the latest phablet from Samsung. So the Galaxy Note 5 is following in the footsteps of the Galaxy S6 and the S6 Edge in terms of its design, and that is definitely not a bad thing. Gone are the days of having faux leather backs mixed in with a bit of aluminum. Now we have two panes of Gorilla Glass, one on the front, one on the back, wrapped fully around in aluminum. On the bottom, we do have the micro USB port for charging, three and a half millimeter headphone jack, speaker grills, as well as the S Pen port. Up top, we just have the SIM card slot tray, volume rockers on one side, and on the other, we just have the on and off button slash sleep button. Nice and simple, and it is elegant. Speaking a little bit more about the S Pen, which is what of course makes the Note 5 and all of the Note series unique in general, we do have a few modifications this year. It does require a click to unlock, which might annoy some people, but maybe it just takes a bit of time to get used to. The S Pen itself has a few minor changes. It's nice to hold in the hand, it's got a nice weight to it, and of course has that button to activate air command. It also has this function up top, which reminds me of a regular pen. It is now a clickable top, and I can see myself clicking this all the time. Super addicting, but I'm not sure if the spring inside will hold up over time. But this is the major problem that has everyone talking. For the first time, the S Pen can go in backwards. And personally, I don't see this as an issue because I would never insert it in backwards, but I can guarantee you there will be some idiots out there that do that and it will cause problems with your S Pen and you'll actually lose some functionality of launching air command. So just don't stick it in backwards and be smart about it. Other than that, the S Pen has basic functionality that you've come to love and expect. It's got action memo, you can write down a quick memo, save it and send it for later. Screen select, highlight and crop a specific area of the screen screen right where you can take a screenshot of whatever screen you're on and add some text to it and of course classic s note where you can leave notes change up the font change up how you write change the coloring and if you're a really good artist you can make some pretty interesting pictures you can change the stroke of course of the pen and it is once again pressure sensitive so if you have a pen that writes thicker the harder you press the thicker the line will be and the lighter you press the thinner the line will be also returning is air hover, so if you hover closely over an image or a video, you can get a small little pop-up of what that image will look like. I don't really use this too much, but I'm sure it does come in handy for some instances. And last but not least, you can change all of your S Pen options naturally in the options menu. So you can choose to disable sounds, vibration, set alerts, or turn on or off the pointer. Everything that you need for your S Pen can be found here. And even though every year I say that I will use the S Pen, I find myself using it a lot when I first get the Note. Unfortunately, after time goes on, I find myself using this less and less. Other than that, the performance on the Note 5 is extremely quick and snappy, and it's just like the GS6, the GS6 Edge, the GS6 Edge Plus. I know there's a lot of devices from Samsung, but they all share the same internals. It does run Android Lollipop 5.1.1 out of the box with TouchWiz skin over top. In terms of hardware, it does have a 64-bit octa-core processor, 4 gigs of RAM, the latest GPU from Samsung, 32 or 64 gigs of onboard storage, and you can tell in the benchmarks that it is a powerhouse. 1488 single core and 5110 multi-core score. And this translates to very good performance, as I said. When you're playing any sort of game, multitasking, watching video content, the Note 5 will perform like a beast. And as it should, it retails for $750 to $800, depending where you are, fully unlocked, or if you're on a contract, you're looking to spend two to $300. So it isn't a cheap device. There were very rare instances of applications crashing and I had to reopen them, but I couldn't even get that on film, that's how rare they were. Whatever you throw out the Note 4, it will gobble happily, 4 gigs of RAM, 
but I have heard some reports of improper RAM management and some units having less than optimal performance. Let me know down below how your Note 5 performance is though. Getting onto the camera, which I feel I've reviewed in the other Samsung units, it is a 16 megapixel sensor and it is one word, awesome. Taking stills is a pleasure, video can record up to 4K, autofocus is nice and quick. Here are a few sample shots as well as video footage. Let me know what you think down below. Overall, I'm still going to rate the Galaxy Note 5 as my favorite Samsung device of 2015. I still like the S Pen, I love the size, love the battery life, love the performance. What is not to love? That was my review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 5. Let me know what you think of this device down below in the comments. And other than that small design flaw, I can still guarantee you a lot of people will stick their S Pens in backwards have a lot of broken S Pens and maybe even Galaxy Note 5 units. I still think this is a very, very awesome device. As I said, let me know down below in the comments. And if you like this video, be sure to smash that like button because you are all super awesome. And I will catch the rest of you in my next episode. Peace.